Hey guys, what's up here? So today's video is about advanced techniques and tips for competing at a higher level in Splatoon 2, which should help you if you want to become a competitive player in this game. I try to gather tips, tricks and techniques, which are usually not mentioned in other tip videos you find online, except for a few. I hope some of the tips will help you guys to enhance your gameplay. I've split the video in two parts, with the first one focusing on movement, while the second one is about all kinds of techniques and tricks for weapons, specials and modes. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with the most important and obvious one, which I'm sure most of you have heard of before. Substraving. Substraving is the movement technique you want to implement in your gameplay the most. It basically allows you to cancel your momentum at any given time into an opposite direction. Just compare those two clips here. The left one is without substraving and the right one is with substraving. You can see without substraving you carry a bit of momentum before um, turning around the opposite way. While with substraving you stop immediately and can face any direction immediately afterwards. You can basically use this technique in any given situation. You perform it through using the R button, the sub weapon button, to cancel your momentum while swimming. The easiest way to do it is to keep holding the R button while you change directions. But I personally just let go of the button after each substrafe, so I don't use my sub weapon on accident. That SRBT dude did a video on how to perform it a long time ago, so if you still have troubles performing it, I recommend you to check that out. It's linked in the description below. The next technique doesn't really have a name yet, but I don't see everyone using it even though I think it should be common sense. I'm just gonna call it ledge cancelling for now. If you climb up a wall, don't just keep spamming the B button. This will just result in you jumping off the ledge once you reach the top of the wall. Instead you want to press ZL right before you reach the ledge, so you can cancel your air momentum and snap on the ground immediately. And this allows you to get on the ground sooner and start swimming sooner as well. You can also cancel your air momentum with your main weapon, but it's only recommended if there's no ink below you yet or there's an opponent waiting for you. If there's already ink below you, just use the first technique so you can swim immediately afterwards. Just look at the clip here, you can clearly see the difference between not using substraving ledge cancelling and using both techniques. Also, if you keep climbing a wall and the path to the top is not inked entirely yet, it can be faster to just keep swimming upwards instead of dropping and painting the wall, since you can paint the wall a little bit with your ink itself, so just keep pressing B to get up there. Another commonly known technique is stealth swimming, with just tilting your stick a little bit, you're able to swim without leaving a trail. It's especially useful if you want to go for a sneaky place or um, flanks, or just when you don't want to commit to Squid Ninja entirely. Speaking about Squid Ninja, you're actually able to track and hear Squid Ninja users, like in the following clip. So if you come across Squid Ninja users, watch out for that. It's even possible to hear every player camping in ink, if you just get close to them. Just try to listen to the bubbly sound in the clip. If you suspect someone to camp somewhere, I recommend you to, to engage him with stealth swimming. So this is gonna make it harder for him to see you coming. And yeah, just use the audio to track him down. Speaking about substraving again, substraving doesn't work with Raymaker. So instead you wanna do Raymaker substraving, which is basically the same as substraving. Except that you can't see your momentum with ZR, so basically your Raymaker shot. This is especially useful for dodging Stingrays, which is definitely something you need to be able to when you want to carry the Raymaker. Also, you're able to cancel your Raymaker shots by just hopping into ink again. Sometimes you find yourself in situations where you already charge your Raymaker shot, and where the knockback you receive while firing it can actually put you in a disadvantage. And sometimes there's just an opening where you don't need the knockback, since it only um, costs you a valuable time. And in a mode like Raymaker, every second a meter counts and can be game deciding. I quickly want to cover two more techniques, which are already well known from Splatoon 1. The first one being Splat Hopping, where you jump out of your ink with B, while at the same time turfing the ground beneath you to land in again. You use this to escape situations where you're surrounded by enemy ink. The second technique is Splat Dashing, which is actually kind of similar to Substraving. Instead of using R, your sub weapon, to cancel your momentum, you're gonna do it with your main weapon, set R. But your goal should be actually to shoot your opponent while doing so. This results you in dashing left and right, while you actually shoot your opponent, but you're still really hard to hit since you're dashing pretty quickly. This is mostly used by shooter players, but other weapon classes like Blasters or Slushers also benefit from that. The last movement tip I can give you is that you should prevent to do full jumps anytime you can. 
The longer you jump, the more the jump gun will slow you down. So if you're jumping over an obstacle and can easily make it without doing a full jump, just go for a shorter, faster jump, so you don't lose that much momentum in the air. Just compare those two clips here on Makumart. You can clearly see that it saves some time, and every frame saved in your movement is always a good thing. Alright, moving on to some more specific tricks for specialist weapons and modes. I want to show as many tricks as I possibly can, so it's going to be more of a showcase rather than me going into detail. Most techniques are not that hard to pull off anyway, so I will only cover the most complicated ones in detail. First of all we have the special ink tank recharge. Always be aware you can recharge your whole ink tank by using a special which can really save you in some situations. Some weapons can pull off neat tricks with this mechanic too. If you play a double suction bomb set for NZ for example, or any other weapon with a set allowing you to throw two bombs, it can, in NZ's case, create a mini suction bomb brush while you're using your armor simultaneously. The sloshing near, for example, can do a really fast double slosh by cancelling the first slosh with your special. There's plenty of room for many weapons to get creative when it comes to using the ink tank special recharge. Duelies, for example, recover rolls as well after you use your special, resulting in multiple rolls. Take Tetra Duelies, for example, here. It can roll a total of 8 times using this trick. Speaking of duelies, don't forget that your accuracy is nearly perfect after you roll, with no RNG at all. You can even hold that state by just keep pressing set R for shooting, for as long as you desire. The only downside is you standing still though. And next up my favorite weapon class, Sloshers. You can curve the slush of your slusher if you tilt your camera quickly while slushing, resulting in a wider and bigger hitbox. I found this useful in situations where you want to hit opponents quickly standing at a 90 degree angle next to you. It's super fast while you actually increase your chances to hit them. Slosher can also one-shot opponents when it has ball already in close range. Just activate the ball as soon as you hit the opponent to finish the kill with your special. Slosher and Tri-Slosher can both perform one-hit KOs by sloshing in the air first, so that both sloshers land at the same time. While this is really hard to hit on moving targets, it's useful to camp super jumps or to quickly kill a backliner when you manage to get behind them unnoticed. Speaking of Tri-Slosher, Tri-Slosher can do pretty fast kills, which almost feel like a one-hit KO by burst cancelling. Simply throw a burst bomb and hit it direct with it, and slush immediately afterwards. Since there's almost no lag on the burst bomb, you can confirm a pretty fast kill. The blob lover can actually spam his bubbles in horizontal lines by swinging your camera from one side to the other, allowing you to shut down more space at once and almost guaranteeing damage on opponents in this area. You won't be able to get quick kills by doing so though, so it depends on the situation when to use it. Another great trick to abuse is the fact that you can see damaged enemies on the map. On weapons with a lot of range and burst potential, this can tell you exactly where the opponent went after hitting them behind walls. This is amazing to get the needed damage in to get the kill. Stingrays, ink jets, burst bombs, dynamos and explosion benefit greatly from that. Ink walls can be thrown off walls so they deploy beside you in the right angle to hide behind them without you having to expose yourself first. This is a safer method to get them in the right spot. Also keep in mind a wall on the tower and tower control, or at the basket and clam bits can cause miracles. You can throw a wall on tower at any time by jumping off it. It's also useful to learn the spots as well, where you can let splat walls bounce off walls to get them on the tower without you having to leave it. Brella also has a cheesy one hit KO, which is most useful for quickly killing unaware backliners or super jumps. Just get close to them and finish them off with your shield after you inflict 90 damage onto them with your main weapon. Even though missiles are still at the bottom of the special tier list, people tend to forget that you can scout enemies simply by using a special for about 10 seconds. This is especially great in a team environment and sort of works like an egg collocator if you can get the callers quickly to your teammates. Suction bombs are one of the best and powerful spacing tools in the game. You can get really creative with placing them, so don't be afraid to place them in inconvenient spots and trip opponents. You can even kill around corners with the sub weapon if you place them at a wall in a spot that only a few pixels of it stick out. The opponent will barely be able to see it, and in the heat of the battle there's almost no way you can spot it. Bombs in general are awesome tools not only for spacing but also for scouting people. Especially Splat and Suction Bombs have an insane blast radius, making it easy to find hidden enemies if you throw them in spots you suspect someone to be in. Auto Bombs are probably the best for scouting out of all bombs, since they actually start to track the scouted opponent. Inkjet is a super powerful special already, but mastered it can be even more of a threat. 
Keep in mind to duck while hovering to make your hitbox smaller and use the hover boost to get into even higher spots. Also don't forget that you can recharge your hover boost by going into ink again, enabling you to quickly go up and down to make it really hard for opponents to hit you. Super jumping is also very important in this game. Obviously you should abuse super jumping for specials like splashdown and combine them to get some surprising kills, but also don't underestimate the value of jumping back to spawn instead of dying when the teamfight is lost anyway. You will regroup faster with your team and you will keep all of your special charge, enabling your team to push back in way quicker to not lose as much time. In Clam Blitz it can be a cheesy strategy to toss the last in the clam for Power Clam in front of you, so the opponent can't spot you because of the carried Power Clam. This is especially useful if you want to approach the enemy's basket unnoticed. While using a bubble blower a lethal bomb comes in pretty handy. Lethal bombs are bombs like splat or suction bombs. Sometimes it happens that an enemy charges at you in your vulnerable state while casting your bubbles. But due to these bombs exploding right on impact with bubbles, you can easily defend yourself with it. Before using your bubbles, you can also throw your sub weapon like suction bomb or sprinkler at the exact place where you place your bubbles, so they already get damaged, making it easier for you to pop them afterwards. There's also a technique allowing you to cancel your swings while using bubbles, so it gets deployed faster, hence leaving you less vulnerable. Just compare these two clips to see how much faster you can deploy them. The easiest way to do so is to keep holding ZR after you did your first swing and tap ZL once immediately after each swing. By walking forward while doing so, you can throw them basically attached to each other, leaving them in the perfect state to get one big blow from them. Combine that with the previous two points and your bubble play will be way more scary. Alright, this covers most of the lesser known techniques and tricks I'm aware of so far. I hope you found one or two helpful tips to enhance your gameplay. If there are more techniques and tricks, which I'm sure there is, let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment and subscribe for more guides and competitive gameplay in the future. With that being said, have a good one, see you around guys, Watson out.